بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحديث حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So um, we arrived at this chapter following on from uh, where we left off last week So the Sheikh he says as you can see at the top of the page, he says, Ad-dalilu ala arkan al-iman. So, so the evidence is, the evidence is uh, for the, uh, for the uh, six pillars of iman. So what are the evidences? And the Shaykh, he, he, he quotes an ayah here from the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 177. And he says, wa Ala hadhi l-arkan sittati Qawluhu ta'ala Laysa al-birra an tuwallu Wujuhakum Qibla al-mashriqi wal-maghribi Walakinna al-birra man Amana billahi wal-yawm al-akhiri Wal-malaikati Wal-kitabi wal-nabiyyin So if we Go to the uh, The meaning of that uh, yeah. So we go to Surah Baqarah Give me one second Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 177. Start of the ayah. It is not al-bir, piety, righteousness, and each and every act of obedience to Allah, etc., that you turn your faces towards east and or west in prayers. But but al-bir is the quality of the one who believes in Allah, the last day, the angels, the book, the prophets. uh, uh, Obviously, uh, that's just where the shaykh has stopped. So we'll stop there with him. With regards to the ayah, so the Sheikh he says, um, "Lama dhakar Sheikh who hadi hil arkan, hadi hil arkana, dhakar dalilaha min al Qurani wa min al Sunnati, li anna ayya shayin min umur al Dini wal Ibadati wal Aqidati wa umur al Ahkam al Shariyati yahtaju ila dalilin." وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ دَلِيلٌ لَمْ يَكُنْ صَحِيحًا لَمَّا ذَكَرَ الشَّيْخُ أَرْكَانَ الْإِيمَانَ السِّتَّةَ ذَكَرَ ذَكَرَ دَلِيلَهَا مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ أَوَّلًا ثُمَّ مِنَ السُّنَّةِ So then the Sheikh, he, he says here that, he says, when, when the original author, Sheikh um, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, mentioned, the uh, the six pillars of iman. When the six when these pillars were mentioned, he mentioned its evidences from the Quran, and then from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the Sheikh says because uh, anything from the affairs of our religion, and from the affairs of worship and belief, uh, and from the affairs of rulings, laws and judgments etc from the sharia uh, they need um, when we come with these uh, points of of what the sheikh has mentioned they require um, evidence so all of these things these affairs they require evidence and the sheikh says so when the original author mentioned uh, the six pillars of iman he also mentioned the evidences for them because it's to do with the affairs of our, of our, uh, of our belief. Uh, so he mentioned uh, the evidences for them from the Quran firstly and then from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, فَمِنُ الْقُرْآنِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ So then going back to the ayah that was quoted and if we just remind ourselves of the meaning of the first part, it, it is, it is not al-bir, piety, righteousness, and each and every act of obedience to Allah, etc., that you turn your faces towards, right? 
So the Shaykh, he stops there for us here and he's going to explain what that means. So he, he explains the word Al-Bir. And he says Al-Bir, he says, huwa fi'lul khayr alladhi yuqarribu min Allahi wa yusil wa yusalu ila jannati fa kullu af'al al-khayr hiya min al-bir fa al-bir lafzun 'am yajma'u jami' yajma'u jami' anwa'i al-khayr wa anwa'u ta'at kulluha kulliha dakhilatun tahta musamma al-bir wa tahta musamma at-taqwa so basically what the Sheikh says here, he says, what does albir mean? He says it is uh, it is an action of good. It is any action that is a good action that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in turn, it, it makes you arrive to his jannah. So essentially doing good gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's albir. And the eventuality of that is that you arrive at the Paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So the shaykh says Every action Or all of each of these actions Of good good, They are from Al-Bir And Al-Bir is a, it's a oh, It's an encompassing term For all that which is good Good actions All that which is good From good actions Is called Al-Bir So the shaykh says Al-Bir Is uh, It's a word that's general in its meaning and it, it it covers and encompasses all the types of good. And it covers all the types of obedience. Yeah, that comes under what is called Al-Bir, the word Al-Bir that the Sheikh has explained. And also comes under uh, the word At-Taqwa. So then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, فَالْبِرُّ وَتَقْوَى مِنَ الْأَسْمَاءِ الْعَامَةِ الَّتِي تَجْمَعُ كُلَّ خِسَالِ الْخَيْرِ وقوله تعالى ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب هذا رد على اليهود الذين استنكروا تحويل القبلة من بيت المقدس so let's just go back there. So then the Sheikh, he says that um, he says Al-Bir and At-Taqwa are from those nouns, those general sort of nouns or names that are general in that they cover and they encompass all the characteristics of good. It's like a general term. And going back to what, uh, the ayah that was quoted where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وَجُوهَكُمْ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Then the shaykh he says with regards to this ayah as we read the translation and the meaning of he says this is um, a rebuttal and a refutation uh, of the Jews so it's refuting the Jews who rejected the change of the Qibla because if you remember uh, originally the Qibla was towards Jerusalem Palestine, Jerusalem that way but then there was a change do you remember and, and so the Qibla it was when Allah ordered the Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims that the Qibla would be the, the, the prayer direction would be towards Mecca and so the Jews they rejected this because obviously they felt like it was taken away from them um but it was upon them obviously to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Which uh, some of them didn't, many of them didn't But uh, they they rejected this And so it's a refutation of them Of their rejection of the change of the prayer direction Or the Qibla From Jerusalem to the Kaaba The noble Kaaba So they rejected And turned away from this Even though they had knowledge they had knowledge that this was the truth They knew it was the truth 
but they still rejected it. They moved, they turned away from this, uh, from the perspective of because of their stubbornness, being stubborn and being arrogant, the arrogance and having jealousy towards the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and for this ummah. Umar Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then the shaykh, he continues and he says, he says, Allah says, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ جِهَةً مِّنَ الْجِهَاتِ مَنْ غَيْرَ أَمْرَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَمْرَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنَ الْبِرَّ تَاءَتُ وَلَكِنَ الْبِرَّ تَاءَتُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى إذا أمركم بأمر وجب عليكم امتثال وجب عليكم امتثاله هذا هو البر فإذا أمركم باستقبال بيت المقدس فالبر في ذاك الوقت هو استقبال بيت المق استقبال بيت المقدس لأنه طاعة الله طاعة لله عز وجل ثم إذا أمركم أن تستقبلوا الكعبة فالبر هو استقبال الكعبة فالبر يدور فالبر يدور مع أمر الله سبحانه وتعالى. So then in this um, paragraph the Sheikh he says as Allah said ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم جهة من جهات. So you know it's not. So if we go back to the ayah, let's remind ourselves. Let's go back to the ayah. And if you go back to Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 177, then it, it is not albir, piety, righteousness, and, uh, and each and every act of obedience to Allah that you turn your faces towards the east and, uh, or towards the west in prayer. Yeah? So then the Shaykh mentions here that it's from the direction, uh, from a, obviously changing your direction from the directions. And it's not upon us to change our directions in prayer. For example, just in this example, other than that which Allah has commanded us with. So if Allah command, commanded us with, for example, uh, in the early Muslims, the early Muslims, they were commanded with the, the Sahaba, the Prophet they were commanded with uh, in their prayers, uh, directing their prayers towards uh, Jerusalem in that direction, the Qibla. And then Allah changed that and said, no, now you must direct and have your Qibla that's towards the Kaaba. So the Sheikh is saying here that it's not about which direction you're going in, but it's it's about following Allah's command. Allah has commanded you with something, then it's upon you or upon us to follow that and act upon those commandments as mentioned previously as well in previous lessons if you remember. So if we if so if you're commanded within with a command then it's obligatory upon you to carry it out and act it out. This is what what bir is, al-bir. This is al-bir. So if Allah, for example, in the in this situation, if Allah says, okay, you pray towards Bayt al-Maqdis, Jerusalem, then you do that. If Allah says you pray towards al-Kaaba now, then you follow his commands. And that is what al-bir is. And obviously in that time period, as, expl as explained, with regards to the directions. Obviously now it's the Kaaba and it, all, all, it always will remain the Kaaba of course. Because the Shaykh says, because it's to do with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal. Yeah? So uh, that's what the Shaykh has mentioned here. So, he's, so he says that Al-Bir, it revolves around Allah's commandments. So, so all kinds of good, where's the original source? It's what Allah has commanded us with. So it revolves around the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, ultimately. So then, the shaykh, he goes on to say, he says, Antum abid yajibu alaykum al-imtithal. Ida amrakum allahu an tastaqbilu jihatan min al-jihad, wajiba alaykum al-imtithal. Amma an tata'asabu li jihatin mu'ayyinatin, wa taqulu, لا يصح إلا استقبالها فهذا معناه اتباع الهوى والعصبية العبد الصادق يدور مع أوامر الله حيث دارت ولا يأثر على أمر الله لأن استقبال جهة 
لأن الاستقبال جهة بعد نسخ استقبالها لا بعد نسخ استقبالها لا يكون طاعة لا 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 يكون طاعة لله عز وجل فالعمل بالمنسوخ وترك الناسخ ليس طاعة لله وليس طاعة لله عز وجل وإنما هو طاعة للهوى والعصبية فالبر متعلق بطاعة الله فحيث وجهك تتوجه إن كنت محقا في عبوديتك لله عز وجل ودليل القدر قوله تعالى أوكي سو بجو ستوب ذا فور سكند سو ليتس جو ستوب ذا فور سكند بل I'll just read the ayah again. So here, just to the bottom here, Allah, then, then the Shaykh mentions the speech of Allah. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ As mentioned in Salah. So let's just go back. What's the Shaykh saying in this, in this uh, paragraph here? He says that you are the ser- servants, servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's obligatory upon you to act out what you've been commanded with. So if Allah commands you that you face a particular direction from the directions, then it's obligatory upon you to carry that out. As for, you know, being a fanatic, for example, and uh, sticking to only a particular, a specific direction, and that you say, oh, it's not correct, It, no other direction is correct except this one that you are stubborn upon. This means that you are following your desires and you are um, staunch. That's probably the word to use, staunch in your way, that you don't want to change your way. Like the Jews, um, uh, and the example before, the Jews, didn't, you know, they don't want to change. They know the direction is Al-Qa, but they don't, they, don't want, they don't want it from their stubbornness. And their staunchness. And so the Sheikh is saying here that we, sh- we shouldn't have these characteristics of staunchness uh, or following our desires. If Allah said something, we should carry it out and follow it. The true slave, the truthful slave, he, he follows the, uh, the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherever Allah has said something, he follows it. When Allah says something, he follows it. Wherever it is, he follows it because he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded him with that. And that is the truthful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the Sheikh mentions that if something has been abrogated, for example, this is a good example of abrogation, where the Qibla, the prayer direction, was abrogated from um, from Beit al-Maqdis, Jerusalem, and it became the new Qibla was the Kaaba towards Makkah. Al-Kaaba, then wherever the abrogation occurs, then you, you should follow it because it's a new ruling. And you follow it and it's, a, and, and it's showing your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it's a command and, you, and that you execute that uh, um, what Allah has charged you with in terms of commandments and prohibitions, etc. And also this relates to previous lessons as well, if you remember. Um, so that's an important thing uh, to remember. So the Sheikh mentioned this and then he also says that if you then don't follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then at the end of the day, you're just following your desires and you're staunch upon your own way and it's showing your stubbornness because a person stubborn then doesn't want to change. So then the Sheikh says that Al-Bir, it is connected to, obe- uh, it's connected to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so wherever Allah makes us face or sends us in a particular direction, then we go in that direction. If Allah sends us in that direction, whichever direction it is, then we follow that direction. Yeah? And that uh, shows the truthfulness uh, and honesty in following uh, Allah's uh, commandments and you're able to execute and actualize those commandments and follow them and act, and act them out. And then the, uh, and then the ayah, the, the uh, Sheikh mentions the ayah again that we mentioned at the start of the lesson. You guys can refer to that. We've repeated it a few times, so I won't repeat it again, inshallah. <laughs> so then, and then we move to this section. It says, وَدَلِيلُ الْقَدْرِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَاهُ بِقَدْرِ 
So then the final, the sixth pillar was to do with Qadr, if you remember, Allah's uh, divine preordainments. Uh, and so um, the evidence for that is, as you see here, in kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. And so if we go to Surah Al-Qamr verse 49, that's the reference for us, inshallah. Uh, we see uh, the meaning of this translation. Verily, we have created all things with Qadr, divine preordainments of all things before their creation, as written in the book of decrees, al Mahfuz, as we as, uh, as we mentioned last week. If you remember, uh, if you remember, the Sheikh mentioned this last week as well in more detail. So that completes the evidences for the pillars of Iman. So if you remember. That the Shaykh he mentioned, I think it was about a month ago, or was it about six weeks ago, uh, in one of the lessons when we were covering it, that the levels of the deen, the stages or levels of the deen are al-Islam, that's the first level. The second level is al-Iman, which we've just finished now. And the final level is al-Ihsan, which we're going to cover today, inshallah, or part of it we'll cover today. So al-Ihsan, we move on to al-Ihsan, the, uh, the highest level of the deen. And the most complete level for a person to attain and reach, to aspire to. This is what should we, we should all aspire to, inshallah. So the Shaykh says, Al Murtabatu Thalithatul Ihsan. He says that the third level is Al Ihsan. And we, we, we all know this either previously or uh, before we studied this book uh, or during studying this book in one of the lessons where the Shaykh briefly mentioned as an introductory uh, lesson for us. Previously, so uh, we're going to expand on that now, inshallah. So the Sheikh he says, Al Martabatu Thalithatu. So he says, Yeah, Ta'riful Ihsan. So, what's the definition of Al Ihsan? Uh, he says, Al Martabatu Thalithatu. The third level, Al Ihsan, Ruknun Wahidun, Wahua, and Ta'bud Allah, Ka'anna Katarahu, Fa'in Lam Takun Tarahu, Fa'innahu Yarak. And this is from the hadith. The famous hadith uh, is, uh, and you can find in um, uh, Al Arba'in al Nawawiya, uh, the 40 hadith. Um, it's one of the hadith there, the, in, uh, I think it's the third hadith that's mentioned in the book, and it's the uh, hadith that's famously known as Hadith of Jibreel, the hadith of Jibreel. That's what the, it's known as, yeah. It's uh, known as this hadith. And it, remember, uh, the Sheikh mentioned it as well uh, several weeks ago, and this is. Directly taken from there. So, so what is the definition of Al Ihsan? The Shaykh he says that uh, he says here that the that the evidence is that you um, is taken from the Hadith that you it's as if so you worship Allah as though you see Him as if you see Him, but you won't see Him. Of course, in this dunya we're not going to see Allah, but you you. You worship him as if you see him, right? But the fact is that you can't see him, but you know that he sees you, yeah? So you have, you're in that state of mind that, you know, that Allah is always seeing you. And if you can't reach the first level, which is uh, the first level within these two levels here, is that you always try to picture that, you know, in your heart, for example, that, you know, you can... That, that you can see Allah. So whenever you're worshipping, that as if you can see Allah. Even though you, you can't. But you, you're in that state. Yeah? So, just before we carry on. Uh, sorry, this book's split in this way where we, a new chapter starts and it still hasn't finished the um, um, uh, the previous chapter. So just, just bear with me. Just hold that thought. So, the evidence for the sixth pillar of Iman. Let's just quickly recap. It just mentions here what we already said. So, it just wraps up what we previously said in the other lessons the Sheikh said. He says, just quickly, let's finish this before we move on, because I don't want to confuse you, brothers. So, um, from the si from, so from the six uh, pillars of Iman, uh, is, it, it's uh, the final pillar, which mentions, inna kulla shayin khalaqna bi qadr, qadr, that we read about qadr. Uh, that's the final pillar. And it just says everything, Allah the Sheikh says, that Allah created by His uh, divine preordainments, yeah? and it's in the law al-mahfud, we all know that. The Sheikh mentions that here. Uh, so everything has been preordained. We know that. And we men and the Sheikh mentioned that last week, if you remember. Uh, and the Sheikh just mentions what we mentioned here last week. So I'm not going to go through that again. Um, 
whoever needs to refer to it can refer to it from last week's lesson, inshallah. So, going back to al -Ihsan. So, point 46 now, this is where we are. So the Sheikh says, al fil -lugha. So, as you remember, whenever there's definitions being mentioned, uh, there's two types. There's the linguistic definition within the language, and then there's the uh, legal or the scientific or legal um, meaning. Yeah. So uh, the Sheikh says, he starts off, he says, al -ihsan, the linguistic meaning, he says, إِتْقَانُ الشَّيْءِ وَإِتْمَامِهِ مَأْخُوذٌ مِنَ الْحَسَنِ وَهُوَ الْجَمَالِ ضِدُّ الْقُبْحِ وَهُوَ يَنْقَسِمُ إِلَىٰ أَقْسَامٍ أولا إحسان بين العبد وبين ربه وهذا هو المقصود ثانيا إحسان إحسان بين العبد وبين الناس وثالثا إحسان الصنعة وإتقانها إذا صنع الإنسان شيئا أو عمل عملا فإنه يجب عليه أن uh, wa so basically the Sheikh says here the linguistic meanings and there's three and he says there's three and it's split into three categories he says generally speaking the word al it, in the ling in the language it means uh you know perfecting a thing and com and being complete and completing it perfecting something or reaching perfection and completing it or reaching proficiency and completion and it's taken from the word al-hasan, um, uh, which is to do, which means beauty, uh, uh, beauty, or beautifying something, or beauty, and it's the opposite of um, uh, what would be the opposite of beauty, ugliness, ugliness, yeah, ugly. So that's the root of the word and where it is coming from. And the sheikh says it is, and it has categories. So there's three categories here. There's three types of being good or doing something beautifully proficiently so the first is um doing something proficiently where the servant or servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he he does something proficiently between him and his lord we're talking about worship here yeah and the sheikh says this is what is uh uh what is wanted here this is what we're looking at today here is uh, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he he perfects and um, tries to become proficient and perfects uh, his uh, his worship between him and his Lord of course yeah Thani, the, the second type of ihsan it is between the servant and the people right so between the servant and people so that you do you, you're, you're good to people you know you, you always do good to people you know good manners you know you deal with them justly you're always you're doing good to people, yeah? So that's the other meaning from it. And the third meaning is, for example, in your work, if you're doing something, if you're doing something, making something, doing some kind of job, or whether you're creating something, whatever it may be, that you are proficient in doing that. Um, so if you made something or did something, um, that you reach that level of proficiency and completion, and that you do it well. So these are the different uh, meanings, yeah. But the first meaning is what we're looking at today, yeah. So the per the the servant bet uh, be between him and his lord, perfecting and becoming more proficient uh, in terms of his worship, yeah. So then the sheikh says, "Anawal awal wa huwa ihsan bayn al abdi wa rabbihi bayinahu Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam lama salahu Jibril." Uh, لما ساله جبريل بحضرة الصحابة كما يأتي فقال الإحسان أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنك يراك فالإحسان بين فالإحسان بين العبد وبين ربه هو إتقانه إتقانه العمل الذي كلفه الله به بأن يأتي به صحيحا خالصا لوجه الله عز وجل عمل الإحسان بين العبد وربه ما ما توفر فيه الإخلاص لله عز وجل والمتابعة للرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وقد بين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن الإحسان على مرتبتين واحدة أعلى من الأخرى 
So basically, the Sheikh says here that the first type then, and uh, we just kind of expand, the Sheikh's expanding on the three uh, definitions there. The first type then, he says it is doing good or al ihsan, it's between the servant and his Lord. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, clarified this to us when he was asked by Jibreel in the presence of the Sahaba as it came in the hadith and as mentioned earlier as well and as it came Al-Ihsan says Faqala he said Al-Ihsan it is that it's as if you uh, that, that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though as, is, uh, as if you see him yeah that you see him but you won't see him you will you won't see him in this dunya and indeed he sees you so this is the state that you're in yeah and then the sheikh he says so ihsan between the servant and his lord it is uh, being proficient in in actions and deeds and actions that you 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 do and deeds that uh, actions or commands commandments that allah has charged you with that allah has charged you with he's commanded you with um and that you know and so and that you you know you come with it in a, a correctly correctly i sincerely for the face of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you also are doing it in accordance with the uh, uh, the authentic sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you remember this was mentioned previously as well right in the beginning of this book uh, towards the beginning that uh, and in a previous book as well that we uh, studied that you, for your actions to be accepted you have to do it sincerely for the sake of Allah so that you don't associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship and that it has to be in accordance with the prophetic the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so this is what you're doing here as well yeah this is what the Sheikh has mentioned and then the Sheikh finally mentions towards the end of this paragraph here he says that Al-Ihsan it, it, Al-Ihsan itself has two levels one level is higher than the other. So the Sheikh is going to explain this to us. He says, Al-Ula, first, the first level of the two levels. The Sheikh says, An ta'budu Allah ka'anna katarahu bi'an yablugha bika al-yaqeen wal-eeman billahi ka'anna katushahidu allaha ayanan laysa indaka taraddud aw ayy shakkin bal ka'anna allaha amamaka subhanahu wa ta'ala tarahu ayanan فَمَنْ بَلَغَ هَذِهِ الْمَرْتَبَةِ فَمَنْ بَلَغَ هَذِهِ الْمَرْتَبَةِ فَقَدْ بَلَغَ غَايَةَ الْإِحْسَانِ تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ مِنْ كَمَالِ الْيَكِينِ وَكَمَالِ الْإِخْلَاسِ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى اللَّهَ أَيَانًا وَاللَّهُ جَلَّ وَلَا لَا يُرَى فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّمَا يُرَى فِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكِنْ تَرَاهُ بِقَلْبِكَ حَتَّى كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ بِعَيْنَيْكَ وَلِذَلِكَ يُجَازَى أهل الإحسان بالآخرة بأن يروه سبحانه وتعالى لما عبدوه وكأنهم يرونه في الدنيا جازاهم الله بأن أفسح لهم المجال بأن يروه بأبصارهم في دار النعيم. So the Sheikh he says so the the high the higher level of the two in terms of إحسان as it has two levels within itself the high this is the higher level and it is that you that you worship Allah, though as, if, uh, though as if you see Him, and that you reach essentially meaning that the Sheikh says essentially meaning that you reach, you reach that level of certainty. You are absolutely certain, certain about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and your iman, your belief in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, as if to the point that as if you could see Allah but, uh, with your eyes, but you don't see Him. But you reach that level of certainty and belief. There isn't so in on the opposite, on the contrast. Then, if you reach that level, you will not have any doubt about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and you won't, you know, uh, falter. You won't go back and forth. You will be uh, uh, perfectly cemented in your position about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That you know, you are certain about Allah in your belief. And that in his existence, you know, you know what I mean. So that's what the Sheikh is saying here. And that you, it's as if you see Allah in front of you with your own eyes. 
So the Sheikh says, whoever reaches this level, then he has reached the utmost level of Ihsan. He's reached the end point of Ihsan. He's re reached the highest point of Al Ihsan. That you worship Allah as, as, as if you see Him. And this is from the completeness of certainty and the completeness of sincerity. This is such a high level. Yeah. So as if you see Allah with your eyes. And the Shaykh says, but Allah Jalla is not seen in this dunya. Nobody sees him and nobody sees him in this dunya. Nobody has seen him and nobody will see him in this dunya. Uh, rather, he will be seen in the akhirah, the afterlife. But you see him like, you know, with your heart, you know, that you have that, you, you know, that you try to position yourself in such a way that it's as if you're seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you know, with your heart, yeah? Yeah, that you can't see him physically with the eyes, of course, but you're, you're putting yourself in that position where, in that high status of al-ihsan, you're trying to be in that, that level of ihsan. Yeah, and the Sheikh says, uh, likewise, uh, the people of Al Ihsan, the people who, of Al Ihsan will be rewarded in the, in in the afterlife, and that they will be able to see Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, um, and and that will be their reward. Yeah, uh, and, and and this will be their reward in 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 the place of, in in the in Darun Naim, i.e. Paradise. So let's continue. So then the Sheikh he says, Qala uh, Ta'ala. Let me just get to do the page. Sorry, brothers, give me one sec. Okay, we're nearly finished, I think. Yeah, okay, we're nearly finished. Another five minutes or so. Five to ten minutes, inshallah. Qala Ta'ala. Lilladina ahsanu al husna wa ziyada. A ziyadatu hiya nadru li wajhillah. السبب أنهم أحتنوا في الدنيا فأعطاهم الله الحسن وهي الجنة وهي الجنة وزادهم رؤية وزادهم رؤية الله عز وجل وزادهم رؤية الله عز وجل تعبد الله كأنك تراه على المشاهدة والمحبة والشوق إلى لقائه سبحانه وتعالى تتلذذ بتعاته وتتمع إن وتتمع إن إلى طاعته سبحانه وتعالى تشتاق إليها هذه طريقة المحسنين. So just wrapping up the first level here, the highest level of إحسان. So then the Sheikh he mentions, uh, he quotes an ayah from the Quran, and if we go to the meaning of this ayah, uh, it is in سورة يونس يونس the start of the ayah. For those who have done good is the best reward, i.e. paradise, and even more, i.e. having the honor of glancing at the countenance of Allah, being able to see Allah. So they'll be given a great reward, which is paradise, but they'll be given an even greater reward than that, which is being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is, that is the greatest reward that anybody can attain, is being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the greatest reward and greatest blessing. Yeah, so the Sheikh uh, references that for us, and then he says that aziyada it is as mentioned here in the Quran with the with the meaning that you see the face of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and that you see Allah, and the reason for that is that uh, that they those the muhsinin uh, the good doers the, the the ones who reach this level of ihsan that they did this in the dunya, you know uh, they um, uh, so Allah gives them. You know this this blessing, this reward of Jannah, and being able to see Him. That's the ziyada. That's the the extra bit, the uh, the extra uh, reward that they get from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And so, because you know, you you see yourself. For example, you or they worship Allah as as if they can see Him, but they know they can't see Him. But they are, they're in that state, yeah. Uh, as the Sheikh explained in the previous paragraphs, and they have that love and that uh, desire. That shok, they have that desire, that willingness uh, in meeting their Lord Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that they, they, you know, they, uh, they, you know, love, you know, 
the you know his obedience you know being obedient to him and they taste that and they want to taste more of that obedience you know they they love the the taste of obedience uh, and they want to be obedient and you know um, and they see the beauty of that um and also that their hearts are content you know uh, with the uh, by worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they miss uh they miss it you know they actually miss you know uh, you know disobedience you know they want more you know um and this is the way the, all of this is the way of the muhsinin this is this is the description of the muhsin yeah then the second level which is slightly lower than that the second level of uh, al ihsan and the sheikh he says al martabatu thaniya the second level of ihsan the one that's lower than the one he's explained here for us hafizullah uh, says idha lam tablugh hadhihi al martabata al adhimata fa innaka ta'budu fa innaka ta'buduhu ala tariqat al muraqaba bi an ta'lama anna allah yaraka wa ya'lamu halaka wa ya'lamu ma fi nafsik fala yaliqu bika an ta'sihi أن تأسيه وأن تخالف أمره وهو يراك ويطلع ويطلع عليك وهذه وهذه حالة جيدة ولكنها أقل من الأولى وما دمت أنك تعلم أنه يراك فإنك تحسن عبادته وتتقنها لأنك تعلم أن الله يراك ولله ولله المثل الأعلى ولله المثل الأعلى لو كنت أمام مخلوق له منزلة وأمرك وأمرك بأمر وأنت وأنت تنفذ هذا الأمر أمامه وينظر إليك هل هل يليق بك أن يقع أن يقع منك إخلال بهذا الفعل الحاصل أن الإحسان على مرتبتين. so let's just stop there and then we finish off in شاء الله. so then the second level of Ihsan, the lower level. So if you can't reach that high level of Ihsan, if you can't reach that level explained before, the great level of Ihsan, if you can't reach that, then at least, then, you know, you worship, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, upon the way that of Him, you being, you knowing that Allah is watching you. He sees you and He hears you. He sees everything you do and He hears everything you say. He knows everything and He knows what's inside you. He knows you and everything inside you. And he knows everything that you do. So you're in this state that you're being watched. That Allah is watching you, watching over you. Yeah, so you're in that state. That's the minimum that you should be in that state of Ihsan. Yeah, and that's the situation and condition that you're in. And then the Sheikh says, so it's not befitting uh, uh, for you or to you. Uh, it's not befitting then for you to uh, be disobedient to Allah because you know he's watching you. And if you're about to do something that's disobedient to him, you should stop. He's watching you and he's seeing what you're doing. So when you're like that, then it's not befitting for you to, uh, if you're in that state, then it's not befitting for you to commit a sin then. Because you are in that state that you're knowing, oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me and what I'm doing. You know, and that you, and also that it's not befitting that you, um, uh, you know, oppose the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. And that he sees you. And that he knows what you're doing. And this is, you know, this condition is a good one. It's a good condition to be in. It's a, it's a very important and good condition to be in. However, it is, it is uh, lower than the uh, previous uh, level, the first level is, is lower. So the Sheikh says, as long as you, um, you know that, you, uh, that Allah sees you, and then, you know, you are, um, you're having that ihsan in your worship and you are trying to be more prof you're becoming proficient uh, and uh, uh, being proficient in your ihsan this level of ihsan so uh, because you know that Al uh, that you know that Allah sees you then the sheikh says for example Allah has the, the highest example right meaning that um, if you were in if you were in in front of somebody, some figure that, uh, you know, some major figure, whether it be some a person of high status, if they ask you to do something, for example, you're not going to reject it, are you? But then Allah has the highest example, status and everything, right? So how can we um, then refuse what Allah has commanded us with? 
this is what the Sheikh is trying to say here to us and um, and has said to us. So we should remember that. So you should always remember that Allah is watching you. He's there. He's watching you uh, and he's there in his knowledge and sight. Um, and he sees you and he hears you. Yeah, and he has the utmost exam example. And so therefore, you know, we should follow his commandments. And we should be in that state, at least the very minimum, as the Sheikh explained. I mean, if you can't reach the highest level of Ihsan, then the very minimum we should be trying to get to is this level here. And that is that Allah is watching us. The Sheikh says the point being here is that Al-Ihsan has two levels, as he has explained to us. The first level is that you are able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you have, your, your heart is there. You know, as he explained in the in the in the in the initial level of Ihsan, and that as if you see Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that even though you don't see Him, He sees you, and you've got that full certainty, right, about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, as as the Sheikh explained. Then the second level, the Sheikh repeats this for us here, as we just finished in that pre, uh, uh, paragraph above, that at the minimum, that you should be in a condition that you know that Allah is watching you, He hears you, and He sees you, and so. It's as if you're being watched, you should be in that state so that you can avoid falling into sin and making sure that you're following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you're in that condition at a minimum. Yep. And uh, finally, uh, this last paragraph here, let's finish it, inshallah. So just bear with me. Uh, the Sheikh says here, Yeah, so we, we basically finished off what we're saying here. This is what the Sheikh says. So then the Sheikh says, finishes off here and he says, so the highest level of the deen is Al-Ihsan. Then below that, the second highest level is Al-Iman. And then and then at the lowest level, it is Al-Islam, as mentioned before. So the Sheikh, he says, uh, the, the deen it is uh, three circles. The first circle, which is the, the, uh, the one that's the more vast, is Al Islam. Everybody who is a, a, every, a so a Muslim, that a lot of people are in this uh, circle. Then you have the other circle within the circle of Islam. That's Al Iman. So, and then within Al Iman, you have the more constrict, the most constricted circle within that, and that is Al Ihsan. And if you remember from previously, the Sheikh he said that because uh, how do we look at this? We look at it from this angle that every a muhsin is a mu'min and a muslim and and a, and every mu'min is a muslim but not every mu'min is a muhsin and and then you have the lowest level which is al-islam and that is the the majority of the people are there but that's how you look at it in terms of uh, the levels uh, and and uh, in and, and in in al-islam uh, and in in the deen of al-islam yeah and that's what the Sheikh has said. Basically, the Sheikh has said here for us. Uh, and he did explain this to us as well in previous lessons. So um, we'll stop there and we will continue next week and we'll go through the evidences of Al Ihsan, inshallah. So uh, we'll complete that lesson, inshallah. Next week, we'll try to complete that and carry on. Uh, we'll, and then we'll move on to uh, the next part of, of this book. So we've completed the, the first major section almost, inshallah. So um, with that being said, inshallah, we'll see you brothers uh, next week. The lesson may be around about half eight, I think, uh, just after Maghrib, inshallah. I think that might be better. So I'll inform you brothers beforehand. Barakallah feekum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.